Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to today's class. Uh, today, we're going to look at uh, mechanics of writing, and we're going to focus attention on uh, punctuation marks. Punctuation marks. At the end of today's lecture, you will not only be able to recognize the marks, but you should also be able to punctuate your works appropriately. Um, a work without good punctuation marks is no work at all because meaning would not actually be accurately conveyed. There are several of such punctuation marks. We will be able to take as much as we'll be able to take in this class. Um, but accompanying this lecture will be the slides which you can also individually hold down on your devices, whether it is computer, your phones, your iPad or your tablets, you know, to be able to follow along, you know, the teaching on the punctuation marks. So we we'll start with the period or what you call the full stop. The period or what is called the full stop. This is used after a sentence or a statement that expresses a complete thought. The sentence, the statement, the question that expresses a complete thought. In other words, there is a completion in the meaning at the end of which we usually will have a full stop. Example, John came yesterday. You have a full stop at the end of yesterday. The second thing that the full stop or the period is used for is that it is also used to close indirect questions which reports rather than asking questions. An example is I asked how old the child was. Please remember that this is an indirect question. A direct question would have been how old is the child? We all wonder who will win the election. That's also an indirect question. Again, the full stop or the period is used after an acceptable expression, after an acceptable expression, such as salutation. Again, example, good morning, good night, good afternoon. We also use the full stop after an elliptical statement. An elliptical statement, by the way, is usually um, a word or a phrase that is used as an answer to a question or as a transitional expression at the beginning of the paragraph. Example, who was at the door? John would be the answer. Did he come yesterday? The answer may be yes or no. A period is also used, or full stop is also used when we abbreviate, when we abbreviate. Uh, so you have a doctor, DR, you have a full stop because it's an abbreviation. You have an MR, which is an abbreviation for Mr. You have an MRS, which is an abbreviation for Mrs. And so on and so forth. Again, the full stop is used when we have designations, for example, academic degrees, religious orders, courtesy titles, professional titles and so on and so forth. John Taylor, you have a comma, M, P, 
period D period that means John Taylor the medical doctor that's how the Americans you know dif differentiate between a professional medical doctor or an academic medical doctor you also have Toby Nana you have PhD standing for doctor of philosophy it is important to note that periods are not used to abbreviate acronyms uh, by the way acronyms or alphabetizing uh, this is a word formation process where initials of letters from sequences are fused together to form new words example is UBA you don't have a full stop in between the U and B and then in between B and A so a period also is used after numbers and letters in an outline so you have figures for instance you know 10 naira they have a full stop 50 kohu but you should please note that a period is not used after ordinal ending uh, such as we have with dating such as second third and so on and so forth you don't have a full stop then we come to the comma a comma is used in the following the first is to separate main clauses So I wanted to wait for him to have a comma, but it was past 8 o'clock. A comma again is used with non-restrictive clauses. Non-restrictive clauses. In other words, when you have two pieces of information embedded into one an instance and this is marked even in pronunciation the student who was sick left the room the student you have a comma who was sick you have another comma left the room so even in pronunciation there is a brief pause in the two areas where the comma appears but you see without the use of the comma that sentence will only convey one piece of information and there is not going to be a pause from start to finish what you're going to have is that you are going to have a full stop at the end so the student who was sick left the room so that is an explanation of that again the comma is used after adverbial clauses uh, by the way an adverb tells you more about the verb and we're talking about an adverbial clause a clause that is headed by an adverb usually it will begin with if when or do and so on so you have examples if she rings tell her i'll be at her place at six so if she rings you have a comma tell her i'll be at her place at six again the comma is used after introductory phrases after introductory phrases an example discouraged by his friends Fashina for Paul from sponsoring his girlfriend. Or another example, before leaving, the girls washed the cars. A comma is also used after an introductory prepositional phrase. A phrase is a headless construction. A prepositional phrase is a phrase such construction that is headed by a preposition. An example, 
on June 12, 1993, Nigeria had the freest and the fairest election. The comma is similarly used after introductory words. Example after introductory words, example, therefore, we shall go. In fact, the outcome of the vote is in doubt. A comma is also used to list items of the same word class or grammatical unit. An example, in other words, when you have a list of whether they are words, they are phrases, they are clauses, and they are of equal rank, or you have adjectives, or you have more nouns, or you have more verbal phrases, then you require the use of a comma. An example, you visited Paris, Berlin, and Rome. So Paris, Berlin, and Rome are three nouns which needed to be separated by a comma. Or again, the house was clean, quiet, and ugly. The house was clean, quiet, and ugly. Three adjectives. So a comma can similarly be used between two or more adjectives which precede a noun. In other words, these adjectives come before the noun. An example, this city has several long, narrow, dark streets. So long, narrow, dark are three adjectives which are of equal importance. So um, a comma can be used in some you know, for all of this, and it can also be used to separate words for the sake of emphasis, for the sake of emphasis. We go to the question mark, the question mark. The question mark can be used in the following situation. The first is after a direct question. How many years did he spend? Then you have a question mark. A question mark can also be used after question tags, set off with a comma. For instance, he saw the ball, didn't he? That's a tag question set off with a comma. And then you have the question mark added at the end. The question mark can also be used after each question related to the same verb or subject. Example, would the next president be Hassan, Joel, or Sobutadi? Will this year's trade fair show, trade fair show be in Ibadan, in Abuja, in Lagos? So a question, the, the question mark can also be used after condensed questions, after condensed questions. He promised to complete the work earlier than originally scheduled. How much earlier? That is a condensed question. A question mark can also be used after a declarative sentence. Such a question mark changes the declarative sentence into an interrogative sentence. Even in pronunciation, the tune, the tune is usually high up. Example, she is late again. That is a declarative sentence. But the same sentence can also be turned into an interrogative and then it is marked off at the end with a question mark. Examples of such you know, will be she is late again. She is late again. 
then we come to the exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark the exclamation mark is used to show strong feeling or such emotions like joy like sadness warning surprise wishes and so on and so forth john surprise congratulations that is not only surprise but it will also be a wish so the exclamation mark then we go to the apostrophe apostrophe the apostrophe is used first to show possession here we have john's book john's book you have john you have the apostrophe and then you have the s which shows possession the apostrophe can also be used in contraction when we are contracting in other words when we're fusing words together an example is can't which is a fusion of two words can and not eats which is a fusion of eat and is so the apostrophe also can be used the apostrophe also can be used to show possession to show possession to show possession so we come to the column the column is used first to introduce a list or an explanation or a quotation it is often preceded by a set of phrases in other words phrase or phrases will come and then you have the column which provides an explanation or introduces a list or quotation the second use of the column is to separate a main heading from a subdivision in titles for example the title of his ma master of arts project is and then you have the column classified advertisement in nigerian newspaper and then you can have another column and overview the semicolon the semicolon is used to separate main clauses in a compound an example he went to paris i returned to the united states of america here separating main clauses in a compound the semicolon can also be used to emphasize the relatedness of the clauses they link together an example mary revealed to me that she would, she could no longer stay at the village staying there made her remember her lead Parents. So here we have the relatedness of these two clauses. Why would Mary not stay in the village again? Because staying in the village made her remember her late parents. So the semicolon can also be used to mark stronger division in a sentence. Stronger division in a sentence example americans hated death denied death and spent lavishly on funerals you have a semicolon but they had not been gripped by today's frantic illusion that diet and exercise will make death 
go away. So the semicolon is also used in a series. It's also used in a series. In other words, to punctuate list of three or more names followed by identification or similar complex phrases. For students, one scholarship, you have a semicolon, are you at Dayton G, University of Ibado, Timi Prosper, University of Lagos, Tunrayo Mushaku, University of Abuja. So you have the use of the semicolon. Then we go to the hyphen. There are two types of the hyphen. The first is called the link hyphen, and the second is called the break hyphen. Now, what are the uses of these two types? We we'll start with the link hyphen, and then we we'll subsequently look at the break hyphen. The link hyphen is used to connect the elements of associated words used attributively. An example is a well-known woman, father-in-law, on the spot judgment, connecting elements of associated words used attributively. The second use of the link hyphen is that it usually comes between nouns in, in a position that form a single concept. Example, city state. This describes a city that is also a state. Player manager. This describes a manager who is also a player. The third use of the link hyphen is an expression with phrasal base. Phrasal base. An example is weed infected. Weed infected. We have weed, we have infected, we have a hyphen in between it. Drink affected. Feeling station. Boiler room. The fourth use of the link hyphen is to avoid awkward collision of letters. In other words, for letters not to collide into each other indiscriminately. An example is the word reenact, re-elected. Here you will find out that after re, I mean the end of re is marked with an e, you will find out that the beginning or the start of an act is also marked with an E. So in order for these two not to collide, what you have is the use of a hyphen. Re, then you have a hyphen, and then an act. Re, then you have a hyphen, elected. Again, the use, another use for the link hyphen is to make grammatical distinctions between words such words and we're talking about words such as reform the verb it's a verb it means to form again and then you have reform which is a noun so ideally you will find the use of a hyphen to tell the readers that no no Wait, reform. It's a verb which means to form again, whereas reform it's a noun which means a program of action. So you also have examples like anti or passenger rally, pro American rally, and you will have a hyphen after the word anti before the word passenger or after the word pro before the word American. Then the second type of pronoun, the, the second type of hyphen, I beg your pardon, is what is called the break hyphen. You use the break hyphen at the end of a line 
where necessary. In handwritten text or type material, word breaks can be avoided. In print, there are two approaches to word breaks. The first is phonetic in terms of the syllable structure. In other words, you're writing, you go to the end of the, virtually the end of the page. There are two ways if you have a longer word. You know, there are two ways. The first is to break it, you know, phonetically in terms of the, in terms of the syllable structure. The second is to break it up morphologically in terms of the word structure. Either way, you have the use of what is called a break hyphen. Example is if you need to break up the word triumphant, you the break the hyphen will occur at the end of trium, T R I U N, and then the subsequent chunk of letter will be P H A N T. So triumphant, and then you have box A, ah, boxer, and then you have right team. Writing. Then you have the use of the dash. A dash is a longer hyphen. It consists of two hyphens with no space between them. You use the dash to separate words that show a sudden change of thought in a sentence. So the other uses of a dash is first to indicate additional statement or fact. For example, she is a solicitor. Then you have a dash and a very successful one as well. So that is an additional statement. The second is to add an afterthought. In other words, to show that your mind was active and that having said what you were saying, there are other things that you require to say. An instance of this is, I think that you, then you have a dash, look out for that car. Look out for that car means that this is an afterthought. The dash can also be used before an explanation or illustration or listing. You know, here it behaves like the comma. She has only one consuming interest. Then you have a dash education. There is only one thing we can do. You have a dash wait. Long before 1961, many people, then you have a dash. Linguists and grammarians, you have another dash. Realize that language and culture are inseparable. The use of the dash. Then we come to the round brackets, or what is called parentheses. Again, you will see such marks in the slide that accompanies this lecture. The main difference between the dash and the round bracket or parentheses is this. First, the dash emphasizes the word or expression that is set off when we use it while the round bracket or parentheses de-emphasize the enclosed word or expression. So examples, the first to enclose examples, explanation, and aside an afterthought, a reference, passing remarks, and other information not essential for a clear understanding. An example is he is then you have a bracket, as he always was. Then you have the close bracket, a rebel. In other words, the information that is given here are two. The first is, he is, as he always was, a rebel. And the second is, he is a rebel. He is a rebel. So, the round bracket the parentheses, and then the other brackets can also be used with abbreviations. 
abbreviations will subsequently be used. So, example, University of Ibadan, and then you have the acronym UI. You know, you open bracket, you put a U, and then an I, and then you close the bracket. Organization of African Unity. You also have an acronym. You open the bracket, you put an O, an E, and a U, and you close the bracket. The brackets, round brackets, parentheses can also be used. Can also be used. I beg your pardon. Can also be used when we need to revise the sentence. When we need to revise the sentence. When we need to revise the sentence. We can similarly use the bracket. We can similarly use the bracket. We also have the quotation mark, the quotation marks, whether single quotes or double quotation marks. What are the quotation marks used for? The first is that quotation marks are used to enclose a statement that consists of the exact words spoken or written by someone else. In other words, to be able to say, these are not my words. These are the words of the person I am alluding or referring to. So, John said, and then you have the you open quotation mark, the boy has lost his baskets. And then you close the quotation mark. So what are you saying? That these are the exact words of John. The quotation marks are also used for titles, particularly short titles of poems, articles published in a book or in newspapers, short stories, sections of books, magazines, essays, speeches, titles of songs, episodes on television or on radio from a series. So here again, we have examples such as, have you read this poem? A people which is put in quote, double quote, by Wally Shulika. Also, the, the quotation mark, the quotation mark can also be used for emphasis on an expression or term. Example, I disagree with you that the English language is better. Better here is put within double quotes than African languages. Here yeah, what we're doing is we're making a contrast and we're saying A is bigger or better or more significant than B. So we will require to use the quotation mark. The quotation mark is also sometimes used to indicate figurative or fanciful usage. So for instance, you have examples such as, it is good to beware the eyes of match. The eyes of match here is figurative. Or you could say, no wonder the election period is the time of wet year. You know, that is um, a historical event in the life of Nigeria. This all preceded the independence of Nigeria. So we come to the 12th punctuation mark, which is called the carrot. The carrot is an editorial mark. In other words, when you're writing and you just discover that um, there have been some omission, what you do is that you put a carrot. And the carrot is put, it's just an octon V. You know, it's 
you write a V upside down. You write a V upside down. The V upside down to show that something is missing from the text. You can similarly see that in the slide. You know. Then you have capitalization. Capitalization, by the way, is also a punctuation mark. Capital letters are used by writers to make readers to take careful notice of certain words. Careful note, notice of certain words. So, the first word in English is that the proper noun, the initial letter of the proper noun, has to be capitalized. So, example, Musa, in the name Musa, you have a capital M. In the name Musa, you must have a capital M. And then wherever you find capitalization, what it means is that it is either emphasis, you know, it is either emphasis or contrast. Either emphasis or contrast. Then you have underlining. Underlining or italization. Now this also looks like capitalization. And what is it that we underline or italicize? What we underline are publication titles and names. For instance, books. Things fall apart. You underline it to show that this is a book. You have the Divine Comedy, which is a long poem. You also underline that. We also italicize, uh, for those who use a computer, the same. You can have things fall apart and then you put it in italic. What is most important is to know that underlining or our italicization all you know, serve the same purpose, which is to underline, which is to emphasize. So, gentlemen and ladies, this is the end of the lecture on punctuation marks. Uh, I will be giving you a passage that you should punctuate carefully. Please let me have a feedback on how you're doing. If there are areas of difficulty, I'm open to answering your queries. I'm open to explaining further on the punctuation marks. Have a wonderful day and see you next class.